Welcome to the Warrior Razor Podcast, where your hosts, Angela and Carrie, we all need help and support to stay focused and challenged to courageously pursue the life God has called us to live. What we do matters. Here on the Warrior Razor Podcast, we seek Jesus first and use the skills, talents, and passions He has given us second. Hey there, it's Carrie here, and I get the privilege of introducing today's guest. Today on our show, we have my friend, Michelle Wells. And Michelle and I haven't been friends for too long, but when I tell you that we have a common goal and such a connection, I I can't overstate it. Uh, We actually were introduced by a former guest here in William Laser, our friend Kitty Allen. And Michelle and I sat down one morning over coffee And we just could not stop talking about Jesus and our pursuit of his calling on our life. I know you are going to really enjoy today's episode. So let's just get straight to it. Here's our conversation with my friend, Michelle Wells. Hello and welcome to the Warrior Razor podcast. I'm Angela Johnson and I have my wonderful co-host Carrie Smith with me today. And Hello. on the show, hi, <laughs> we have Michelle Wells with us. And I'm excited to get to know you, Michelle. I know that Carrie and you are friends and you have a connectedness of throughout throughout time. But I am you're new to me and you're new to the guests. And so I'm excited to get to know you a little bit better. Carrie started the show with your formal bio, but with all the formality aside, would you just give us a little introduction of, of who you are, what you're up to these days, and in terms of this season's The Next Right Step, where you kind of fit into that theme? I know that's sure. a lot. Yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm just so grateful to be here, first of all. Mm-hmm. I am so glad to be a part of this and just so excited for what you're doing and just love the idea of highlighting what the next best step is. Because yeah. I think we're all looking for it. So right. super excited about everything you guys have going on. Yeah. Um, who I am. So um, my name is Michelle Wells. And I am, um, gosh, always trying to decipher what God wants in my life. And so <laughs> as I give you like the whole picture of who I am and what I'm doing, it probably sounds like I have 15 personalities. So <laughs> um, let's see here. I am I'm a biological mother of two. And I have grown children, and then I'm a stepmom of one. So our kids are 28, 28, 26. We have two grandchildren. We have a 21 month old who just is like pure joy and El Destructo little boy. And then we have a two month old granddaughter. And that's been just a being a grandparent's awesome. Anyone who's a mom and is struggling in motherhood, just wait. (laughs) <laughs> Being a grandparent is just amazing. So that that's uh, that's a big part of my life. It's just my family and my kids. Um, mm-hmm. My husband and I own an accounting firm. Um, I say and I, but really it's him. He's an accountant. I had to have a math tutor to get through college math. So, you know, we don't love all of that. But That's awesome. Um, yeah, so we, we've run this business together and I've kind of helped him build it and get it to where it is over the last 10 years. And so... Um, kind of in a turning point in my life. Um, I, I have, I've written a book and I've done, I'm done, done tons of like premarital teaching and premarital coaching. And we do coaching for crisis couples at our church and a lot of ministry, but this full-time occupation of being in an accounting office is just not working for me. It's not what I want to be doing. Um, so it just, I have the opportunity now. I'm an empty nester, right? It's it's sort of a yeah. new beginning to be able to do what God is really calling me to do. Yeah. And so over the last year, I've really been pray, praying up, I guess, and yeah. uh, trying to figure out what God has for me. And yeah. then... Um, ultimately what the obedience what the obedience looks like and taking yeah. steps to get there yeah gosh yeah. Michelle, you've said so many yeah. amazing things that i want to unpack a little bit first of all i can't wait to be a grandma i'm like with you i like hear all <laughs> being a grandma like is it's amazing best. everybody says it um <laughs> snuggle that little baby uh for me because in my family like nobody has babies right now i have cousins <laughs> boy cousins and i'm like you it's your turn we need babies in this <laughs> your family. numbers all <laughs> yes like come on i don't think it's happening anytime soon but um <laughs> but snuggle that baby um 
Um, and then also, I love that you said um, we started a business and then you were like, well, my husband really does it, but but you <laughs> helped build it. Yeah. Um, and I like that you take ownership in that because I think sometimes yeah. when we're... Um, when we're like not the one maybe doing the what the company is actually yeah. for, like the accounting work. Um, okay. But I remember very specifically one time when we were talking that that you were like, yeah, but you know, he does this part, but you managed all these other things and and got it to the place that it is. And it's a really mm-hmm. successful business. And so, um, you know, owning that and saying that season was great. And yeah. now that stirring in your heart, I'm just, it's, it's always exciting for me to listen to women who are like actively listening to the strain in their heart. They're not pushing it aside. They're not mm-hmm. pretending it's not there. They're yeah, not yeah. ignoring it, you know, and because yeah. it's easy to do that. Our lives get busy and we can just kind of be like, well, no, not na- not today. Not now. Not now. Um, yeah. That you're stepping yeah. into that is really cool. Yeah. When, uh, well, oh, go ahead. No, it's, it's super exciting because I jokingly say, although I'm only half joking, that I bullied my husband into opening his own business, right? <laughs> and so for him, I was like, no, you've got to take this step. You are ready, right? And so now when the tables are turned, I'm like, I don't like the heat, right? Like, he, he keeps telling me every day, he's like, I'm going to fire you. You know, I'm going to fire you just so you move on and you do what God needs you to do. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's just. I love that you're. I love. I love the fact that like as women, sometimes we we are so comfortable being like. Do you remember the the big fat Greek wedding, the movie where I she's like, it. "I'd be the neck that turns the head." Like right. we're we're so comfortable in that role, but then when like it's our turn to just do the thing, we're like, you know, nothing. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> but when I when Carrie and I were chatting through like who do we want to showcase on the show this this season with guests and she's like we got to have my friend Michelle on. Mm-hmm. And uh, we talked about kind of the reason for why you would be a good fit and she's like I think she will really speak to the to the audience that is in this messy middle and that it's okay to not really know what the full totality of the vision is, yeah. but to just be yeah. faithful in that next step. Yep. So with yep. you saying like, you know, I don't really love this piece that I'm in, but you're, <laughs> you're, but you're also doing a bunch of other things. You mentioned your author, yeah. you're, yeah. you're blogging, your, mm-hmm. your, your, first of all, your role at home with grandma, mom, and all the other things. Mm-hmm. I mean, that alone is, is a job worthy of its calling, mm-hmm. but all the other things. So talk to us a little bit about how you, how you are preparing yourself for stepping into the unknown a little bit, but also yeah. feeling very confident in the, with the audience that you have, which you talked about like marriage counseling mm-hmm. and, and couples. Mm-hmm. So you're doing a lot of that stuff too. So yeah. how are you getting laser focused on what next steps look like for you? Yeah. Well, gosh, um, here's how I'm trying yeah. to get laser focused. <laughs> That's okay, too. That's okay. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, so I do think, you know, th- one of the sweet spots in my life right now is that I'm able to get away to pray. Mm-hmm. And that hasn't okay. been... It, it, sometimes not feasible sometimes when you're in the heart of raising kids right you're just getting away to sleep or to (laughs) take a shower or whatever it is that happens to be on the agenda for the day and so I'm I'm in a really good spot where I'm able to really take time like chunks of time to go and listen and this is I mean we're called to do it but sometimes life just gets really gray and it's hard to make that time. And so because of where I am right now, I'm really trying hard to make that time. And I will say that there's something for me anyway, like you keep a constant dialogue with God going throughout the day. Right. But if you can set aside six hours, something (laughs) happens in that like hour four, right? Like, in Ugh. the first four hours, I'm like, so I've kind of made my grocery list and I'm planning <laughs> my next week, right? Like I'm trying to be focused about it, but yeah. just those solid chunks of time. So I would say that first, right? Oh, I love that. that yeah. And that but, I'm looking toward obedience and taking yeah. the courage to make a step yeah. and trying to eliminate the stress of having it be the right step. Oh, well, that's because, good. Yeah, yeah. I think that yep. I just get paralyzed Mm -hmm. by wanting perfection right and i know this is what god's calling me to do i know i know i know instead of maybe god's just saying you know what get a move on and then i will direct the ship a little bit and so i think that there's been a little bit of freedom in that i love um and that accepting that you know maybe the obedience is moving right now 
yeah. and not in moving exactly in the way that he's going to want me to end up. Yeah, that's so good. I love so many things you said right there. <laughs> I, I love that you said hour four because I probably <laughs> maybe, maybe made it to hour two. <laughs> yeah, well, and again, it's I'm in a I'm in a really it's good relative, season, right? right? But <laughs> just yeah. get through yeah. all the you know yeah. the distraction and just. Yeah power through it which sounds crazy but I don't, I don't know I think that once you once you allow your mind to run a little bit yeah then you can kind of get settled yeah well and you also said you said I pray and you mentioned like a long period of time but then you said the word listen and yeah. I think sometimes when we pray we just want to talk the whole time mm -hmm. and we don't just shut up and allow mm -hmm. God to like and allow to hear from him or to hear his nature or to just be just be um so love that First well, of we all. talk, we talk so much about like having a relationship with God, yeah. but so often it ends like a, ends up like a monologue where yes. we're like, okay, Jesus, let me, yeah. let me tell you about it. Right. And now I got to go. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, right. <laughs> and no good relationship works out well that way. So right. just, yes. and, and it, it's hard. Right. But I do think it, sweetness happens when you take the time to allow God to speak to you. Yes. And it also trains you to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. Because when we're asking for direction, if we're not good at hearing his voice, and I don't want to ever claim I'm an expert on this, right? Like, I feel like it's a slippery slope to be like, oh, I got this. But I, I mean, you have, to, you have to listen to be able to hear and then discern, yeah. you know, what his voice sounds like. Yes. And yeah. when, you, when you say that, um, that perfection part, I think mm. so many women resonate with that. Don't you think, Angela, that yeah. needing to know the exact ne right, next right step before they can even move, which is not um, not healthy for anybody, You're right? Mm -hmm. I, I keep thinking about what you said about the, the relational piece of the conversation. And just from a practicality perspective, think about those people in your life that you look down and see their number show up on your phone. And you're like, oh, gosh. The, it'll be just like a one-way dialogue and it's almost like you avoid that because it's there's no reciprocity in the relationship mm -hmm. right. and I think that there's something really precious about the art of just like and I struggle with it listening well and being comfort comfortable with that awkward silence sometimes and I think the absence of the hearing or the absence of like the clear direction is mm -hmm. what can cause people to be paralyzed yeah with that <laughs> next step yeah. but I, it, I think both coexist like okay we stop we listen and if we, even if we don't get a full yeah. message board directive we just be comfortable with taking that step yeah and then also trusting that he's a faithful god so he's going to redirect us but yes yeah, a lot yeah. of good stuff yeah that well, redirection think, mm -hmm. yeah and, and it's i mean god is so grace filled with me yeah. and i think that at the end of the day if i go to him and i say you know what I wanted to go and serve in this marriage ministry, and I really felt like you were directing me to do that, and so I just took four steps to do that. He's not going to be like, well, that was a really stupid idea. You <laughs> wanted to help people save their marriage, right? <laughs> like, it's just, that's that's yeah. not the God that we believe in. He mm -hmm. And if he needs me to move, he's going to tell me to move. Yeah. And if I'm headed in the wrong direction, he's going to he's gonna speak that into me. And I, yeah. And, you know, I'm surrounding myself with community of people who I'm saying, hey, I need you to pray about this, right? And you let me know what you're hearing. And I just, I don't know, I, I guess maybe I'm old, right? I'm a grandma. So I've seen a lot of bad decisions where God has re redeemed them into amazing things. Absolutely. And so that has taken some of the pressure off my life and thinking I have to do it all perfectly, That's right? So good, he yeah. has just redeemed all unbelievably bad decisions yeah. and so i'm like okay so I'm, I'm going sort of in a good direction and service yeah. and wanting to use my gifts and so he's going to redeem that too even if it's not exactly where he wants me in the moment oh that's so good that that longevity of seeing his i, I think about for my own life it's like when i uh, read in the Bible or seeing other people's lives yeah. in my own life, him keeping his promises. Mm -hmm. That always encourages me. And you're right, him redeeming or turning yes. things that that I thought were insurmountable or or were just too too crazy for anything to good to come out of. Yeah. Um, living that and then having others tell you about it. So that's one of the reasons I love our podcast and that we talk to women because 
it's like their experiences, you can not only learn some practical tips and strategies and things like that, but but you can hear in their lives what God has done. And then that like builds you up and bolsters you up and encourages yeah. you to just going. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, I so I was a single mom for seven years. And, you know, you talk about not having time to take a shower or pray for four hours. That was not on the short list, right? Just get to Kroger, have everyone live through the day, get to bed, right? Like, that's it. That's it. You live, you survive. I did. I did. And I remind them of that. You're all still alive. It's fine. Right. So I think that, you know, I do think that after you have had um, failure in your life mm. and big failure, right? Like yeah. I was in an abusive marriage for 16 years, um, leaving that, just getting the courage to leave that and then dealing with the backlash of that, right? Because yeah. even though even though God is good, I believe that my divorce was biblically sound. There are still consequences to that, right? Absolutely, and so yeah. dealing yeah. with the consequences, the real life consequences of that, yeah. it's heavy and hard. Yeah. And yeah. so I think that sometimes you get so determined mm. to never again have that happen. Mm. And in my life, right, that, that like self-protective vow of I will mm. never make a mistake like that again, has truly limited how I've let God speak to me, right? Ooh, instead of just, yeah, instead of just saying, look, I may screw it up again. Mm. And I'm going to come to you and ask you to redeem it again. And I know that you love me enough that you will do it, right? And that you will help me through it. <laughs> I just got goosebumps, Michelle. So good. I mean, that's uh, a soundbite that people need to like replay over yes. and over again. Yes. I feel like that is the hallmark message for not being fearful to move ahead because yeah. even if we make the the stumble the the fall flat on your face mm -hmm. fall off the cliff for a minute like there's redemption even yeah. in that even yes. in that and even framing it it's just not about me Ooh. right yeah. i mean it just i yeah. want it to be and i want to believe that i can control it enough to manipulate the situation so that it ends up doing kingdom work Right. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of how, if, if I were designing it, that's the way it would be. Right. right. It would be all my yeah. strengths. And I put these four puzzle pieces together and then, wow, amazing things happen for the kingdom mm -hmm. when ultimately it's just not about me. It's not mm -hmm. about how I want it. It's not about my control. It's not about what I look like in trying to do it. Right. Yeah. It's truly just about what God needs me to do. Okay. And sometimes, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, this is good because I feel yeah, like, no, no, that's no, all right. No. We're, we're good for this. It's just yeah. a chat. It's a girl, ja yeah. girl, yeah, girl yeah. gab session. I feel like <laughs> that is a, is a practical principle that we need to unpack because yeah. I feel yeah. like, how do you get to the place where, mm -hmm. cause we're humans and in our humanity, we are inherently selfish. And I feel yeah. like, we always, if we're really, really honest with ourselves, we want to manipulate, we want to make the best outcome, we want to shine, we want to be the at a girl, have the pat on the back. So knowing that 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 is at our core and it, it's human, how do you then say, okay, I know this about myself, but how am I going to take myself out of the equation and make it not about me? How do you, Michelle, do that practically as you're walking out this calling? Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes not well. Um, yeah. So maybe you need to ask somebody else. No, I think that, you know, I think there's there's submission mm. to knowing that I don't have the playbook, mm. right? I'm not the creator. I'm not the designer. God knows what I need to do, and I don't. I am 48 years old. If I knew how to do it, I would have done it. Yeah, that's good. Right? And, mm -hmm. and so I think may maybe I'm just tired. And so I've given <laughs> up. I don't know. Right. Like I've, I, I have spent all these years trying to make it work. So now I'm just like, okay, fine. You win. What do you want me to do? And well, I will say to that, Michelle, yeah. like there is yeah. something to just surrender. I, I've tried all the things that yeah. surrender and submission. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and I, I do feel like that's sort of a stage of my life that I'm at. And I wish I could have gotten there 20 years ago. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. what would the last two decades have looked like mm -hmm. if I had been just sub submitting to whatever he had for me? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I do think there are still moments, right, where I just grab it right back from him and say, no, yeah. I'm not doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, no, I don't I don't know. I don't even know how I'm designed. Right. I, I'm still getting to know who I am mm -hmm. and certainly getting to know who God intended me to be mm -hmm. because I've clouded it with sin and 
bad decisions and people have sinned against me and things have happened, right? But he was the designer. And so he has the owner's manual. And why am I constantly trying to figure out how to fix something that I didn't create? Mm -hmm. And even though it's me, right? He knows how to make it right. Yeah. And so some of it's just, I, I do think there's an element of tired, right? Like just <laughs> accepting the fact that I don't even know, there's no YouTube on how to make Michelle Wells the best person, right? right? Yeah. You, yeah. Can't, you can't YouTube it. And there's no self-help that solves any of those problems. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, we're still going to the creator. He's the manufacturer. Yeah. He designed me for a purpose. Yeah. And if I can just rest in knowing that he has my best interest at heart, there's freedom in that. Yeah. And I think that, you know, and sometimes I think it's easier for people to envision like in a relationship or marriage, right? If I can accept that regardless of what my husband does per se, if he doesn't pick up laundry or in my case, <laughs> shut cabinet doors. I don't know why he leaves them <laughs> open. It's like one of those things where I'm like, you opened it. It goes both ways, right? <laughs> Hashtag but, truth. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm like, if I just, if I can just get settled and believe that he has my best interest at heart, mm -hmm. then maybe some of the journey isn't as important, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that there's rest in that with God. Yeah. That, okay, it may not look how I want it to look. And, you know, I, I say, I really feel like I have a call to teach and preach. And I'd rather not do that. I would rather do all kingdom work anonymously, right? Mm -hmm. Let me write a letter, right? Let me have my face just not be present in it, mm -hmm. right? But the more I get tuned into what he wants me to do, he's like, no, I didn't ask you to write a letter, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not about you. No one, mm -hmm. no, we're not doing this so that you are on a stage. We're doing this so that I am glorified. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I like it. But I'm doing it because he is the manufacturer, right? Yeah. He knows what will bring me contentment and peace and joy. And I can't spend all this time praying, God, help me get more content. <laughs> help me find more joy. Help me be more balanced. Help me not be, you know, just a hot mess all the time. <laughs> and then say, no, I don't really want to do that, yeah, right? So it's just, it, there's some incongruence that I'm still working through. You know, God is still, uh, he's still working on me. But I, I do think there's, there's just total submission. Mm -hmm. And in it, there's freedom. Because mm -hmm. you know what, maybe, maybe he knows more than I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's okay. a song by Tasha Cobbs Leonard, I think is her full name now, and it, it's called Gracefully Broken. And it made me just think of that, the lyrics mm -hmm. to that as you were talking about it. Like, he doesn't break us to to ruin us. Mm -hmm. It's like a wild horse. Like, you have to, there has to be some breaking in to do the work ahead. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'd just be losing our minds all over the place. But mm -hmm. when he breaks us, it's to to mold us to his will. Mm -hmm. And it's it's gentle in that, and it's graceful. Mm -hmm. So I feel like when when... Carrie, you said there's something to that surrender. There's something to not the giving up, but the giving in. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think that, you know, in my life, I have seen um, themes, opportunities, they're cyclical, right? And sometimes I get in God's way. I am an expert at getting in God's way, right? <laughs> I, I get in God's way with my kids, right? Where I'll go and mm. solve a problem that I know yeah. he needs them to have. Mm. And as I've gotten older and I've seen it happen repeatedly, right? I, I A few weeks ago, I went in and solved my youngest daughter's problem, right? I went up to my bedroom, told my husband, well, that's coming around again because I just messed that up. <laughs> and so I'm going to have to make this decision mm -hmm. again. I'm like, help me remember mm -hmm. this moment. So yeah. I do yeah. think that God, that's part of the grace of God, right? Yeah. Is mm -hmm. that he will give us another opportunity to do it well. Yeah. Which in some ways is terrifying because right. some of these things are big deals, right? Right, right. But I just, you know, he He is so gracious in wanting our our change of character. Mm -hmm. and our change of thought and not really overly interested in our circumstances mm -hmm. because those aren't that that's not what kingdom work is built on or it, it's not contingent on our circumstances and so uh, it's it's always a work in progress yeah. right but i think that just realizing that i you know what i don't know what makes me happy some of the things I've tried, I've auditioned a lot of things to bring joy, and they have all failed miserably. So, damn, let's see what he has to say. <laughs> so, and we're just, we're rolling with it. We're rolling yeah. with it. Well, and I love that um, you're, 
as a 48 year old woman, is that what you said? 48? Yep. Yep. You, you are, you're not like, it's too late. You know what I mean? Or, and, and I have some really good friends. I have a friend Val that we had on the podcast mm-hmm. that she's like, retirement's not in the Bible, you yeah. know, <laughs> she's, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and but hashtag I think, truth. <laughs> right. I think sometimes the older we get, and I even had, have these thoughts sometimes it's like, ugh, somebody's already doing that. Yeah. Somebody younger or, or, or I should have this figured out by now. I should know who I am. I love that you, I love to hear you admitting I am still discovering myself in midlife. Mm-hmm. And, and because I think a lot of people don't want to admit that they need to actually take steps to discover themselves. Mm-hmm. And I know, um, yeah. Michelle, you and I really got connected through um, Kitty Allen, who we had on the mm-hmm. show, because yeah. you took some steps, like she, she was one of your steps to kind of unpack that, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so like cool. way out of my comfort zone yeah. to go and ask Kitty, hey, here's what I think I should be doing. Like, who am I? Why <laughs> yeah. do I think that that was a great idea? But, you know, I got to go through a program called Prime Movers, which mm-hmm. was an amazing program to kind of figure out what what this holy ambition or this big calling that I have in my life mm-hmm. and, you know, how it started and how it's evolving. I mean, God is gracious because had he given me what I think it is now, I just would have run away and quit. <laughs> right. I'd be like, I don't need that. That's too much. So God has been very kind to um to to give me pieces of it to yeah. keep me moving. Yeah. Um, but I just, you know, the the one thing I will say is that I th- it's almost like spiritual midlife crisis. I don't know. We talk about like <laughs> spiritual formation, maybe this is the midlife crisis of it but (laughs) eventually i know that you know when we get to heaven we're going to have a glimpse of who god intended us to be Mm. minus all the bad decisions and sin and things that have happened to us right and i'm getting to the place in my life where i'm like i just want to recognize that person Mm. right like i don't want to get there and be like i have no idea who she is Mm. so i think that that's part of the formation it's just being able to get closer to who god intended me to be before i came in and messed it all up right yeah, yeah. and and trying to mess it up less as i move <laughs> forward right yeah we're all broken we're all trying to figure it out but i just i do think that there was an 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 intentional design when we were each created and i just want to get closer to that yeah yeah I that's good that. so with that thought and the prompting that you took from the the Holy Spirit or wherever, the the idea, the nudge to reach out to Kitty or to make Mm -hmm. that next step, what was the end result of that? Or where are you now in the process of the thing that God is calling Mm -hmm. you to do to make you look more like the Michelle he's intended Mm -hmm. you to be? Well, it's so funny. Last night I was talking to my husband, Donald, and I was like, it's so weird. So much has changed since I talked to Carrie. Mm. I'm like, it's just uh, life moves fast yeah, and it's is. easy to see when you look back. But sometimes when you're looking forward, you're like, it's forever, right? Yeah. The road is so long. Mm. Um, but so I will say I have been just so blessed. I have had the opportunity to teach and do a little preaching at a church plant called nice. Cross and Crown. And um, we're super excited. It's a young church, right? I'm like, oh my God, they want me there because I'm the old lady, right? Like get my cane and let's just do this. But it's a super young church, super diverse, um, you know, the, which is really important to my family because um, we we are a diverse family. And so finding churches that allow opportunities for both of us to serve is is really unique. Mm -hmm. Um, So we are really praying over um, leaving our church at Vineyard, right? We've been there 14, 15 years. It is our home. We have really made a spot for us and just really praying over, okay, God, do you want us in leadership here? Yeah. And if so, you may have to like drop kick us out of Vineyard, right? Like there there may be some like (laughs) some physical something that has to happen, (laughs) right? Um, yeah. But I, I think that, you know, we've had an, an amazing opportunity to just do some real, uh, and for me personally, to do some preaching and teaching wow. that I would not have gotten otherwise. Yeah. And I just think that there's, I think there's a calling for that for me. Mm-hmm. And I would rather it be something else, right? Like, I feel like it's important to say that, that, you know, we don't get to decide how God calls us. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm trying 
trying to walk that out and just I'm in a position right now where we're uh, my husband and I are really praying about leaving our 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 group in our church and stepping out into this new thing yeah really so that I can teach and do some of the things that I think God's calling me to do I I will say I have been there personally we left a church body that had um cultivated us our marriage um again we my I'm in a uh, my husband's black, I'm white. So we're mm-hmm. in a, our, our family also is diverse. And we were a part of a church body for 16 years, both in leadership. And I felt the the spirit of God just say, you go out with joy and be led mm-hmm. forth with peace. Mm-hmm. And not until that, what did I feel like we had the, the go ahead. So mm-hmm. I feel like that would apply whether you're making decisions on leaving a church or trying to leave a corporate job and do the do the cookie business, the food truck, whatever it is that he is calling you to do, uh, but to go go forth and be let in and enjoy, but be let be follow the peace too, because yeah. I think that yeah. that is a crucial crucial element to it as well. Yeah. And then also, I just feel like sometimes we have to be transplanted a little bit to mm-hmm. to have that next iteration of the harvest like you've (laughs) sucked up all the nutrients in the soil you've used all the goodness that was available to you but sometimes we have to be moved to a different a a different field a different plot of land so we can mature and grow in a different more bountiful way and it's not that the first field was bad or the first job was bad or the first thing was it it served a purpose for the time and the season so and you know i think that In this place where I am right now, I spent all this time praying, right? Like, God, show me, funnel me, help me, right? And that comes, there's a lot of scary things that are happening, right? Mm -hmm. I've been the office manager at this job where I can, you know, I have a lot of freedom. When yes. you're married to the person whose name's on the door, you know, you have a <laughs> lot of freedom. It turns the head. You have all yeah. the freedom. You have a, a lot of freedom, right? <laughs> and so, like, I, I'll, like, talk to my mom and say, you know, I think I'm going to step back at Well CPA. I'm not going to, you know, be as into this as I have been. And she's like, you've lost your mind, right? Like, this is the best gig you've ever gotten. And so just... <laughs> it, it, weighing all that feedback and that this is this is not it's not a worldly decision it's worldly right. stupid right? Yeah, right like on paper this looks stupid yeah. and and having to accept that that mm. there are people who are looking at me going how oh, yeah. entitled does she think she is mm. right and so i just i think that that remembering okay i have to stay rooted and grounded in who i am right and rooted and grounded in who god is and who that god was and is and will be yeah. right and he's unconcerned about how someone else feels about me leaving this position at well cpa yeah. right yeah. and he's not even overly concerned about how i feel about it right <laughs> he he really <laughs> wants this so yeah. that he can get me the things that i'm praying for again yeah. you can't yeah. pray for joy and contentment and peace and all of those things and then say eh, but not that not in that way no right. thank you not how about in right. yeah. I, I always tell people i i will i i have a real hesitancy about ever praying for patience yeah, because oh, yeah. you know how it comes, right? Like, I and whenever people are like, "I'll do whatever God asks me to do," I'm like, "You are a better Christian than me. I like the United States and <laughs> indoor plumbing and yeah. all of those things." So yeah, yeah. I will. Uh, God's still working on me. I think, <laughs> Carrie, we were just talking about this yesterday. Like, patience is literally my the fruit that is often squeezed the most, and it's like just like, oh no, I do not yep. want that. I'm not praying for that one because it's gonna nope. ugh. No, be not today. You, no. Be careful what you pray for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and we talk a lot on this show about how when you are doing something that God has put on your heart, not everyone gets yes. it. We say that all the time. Not everyone is going to get it. And I think you're Mm -hmm. speaking to that, Michelle, right now when you're saying, yeah, your mom's like, you're crazy. And Mm -hmm. the world is like, why would you do that? Or like, come on, Michelle, like there's tons of people preaching out there. Why did they, why you, mm-hmm. you know, like, yeah. all and we things. love our moms. We, they have a good, good voice in our ears. Like, She's right. Not like wrong. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. It's probably sound counsel, but yeah. 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 To Gary's yeah. point, but not everybody's going to get it. Um, yeah. And so when, when not everybody gets it, I think that's where you've got to cling to what you you know, God is telling you the hardest and, and then, and then cling to the people in your life that are saying, 
I trust that what you're hearing is what you're hearing. And I'm here to support you, which I know you've mentioned your husband who said he's going to fire you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Sounds absolutely. like that guy. <laughs> Could happen today, right? Like yeah. just, <laughs> you know, and, and I think that if we are looking for reasons to not do what God's calling us to do, we're going to find them. Oh, right. Fuck. If you look hard enough, you're going to find them. Yes. And, and if you were, if you are looking for, to feel like you're ready, mm-hmm. you're never going to find that. It's like, whenever somebody says, are you ready to have kids? Okay. Yeah. If you say you are, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you're, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just never ready. You're never yeah. ready. I, and, I love the stories of Gideon, like Gideon's story in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Like God knew we needed his story because we will always, like you said, we'll always be looking for a are you sure? Does, would you really, let me just ask you one more time in a different way, because maybe the answer will be different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and it, I, I come back to like, okay, so I love that the New Testament has the feeding of the four thousand, and then like two chapters later, the feeding of the five thousand, right? Yeah. Like, because I'm always like, well, if you would give me a sign, oh come on, <laughs> right? The disciples fed four thousand people, and then three days later, they're like, "How are we gonna do this?" Yeah. Oh my gosh! So, right? So like, they're with oh. him. What are we gonna do this now? with their own eyes? And they still question. Yeah. It. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, no, that'd be me. I mean, he could <laughs> yeah, literally yeah. send me an <laughs> autograph signed letter, like the clouds <laughs> and sky writing, and then two days later, I'd be like, "But there was a storm, right? The wind was <laughs> blowing. I don't know, right?" So <laughs> I don't. It's just it's one of those crazy things where I'm just yeah. like yeah it's it's never going to be enough mm-hmm. and I have to trust that even if I do it a little bit wrong he's going to con- he's not just he's not a one and done God right no. he's oh, not like so I'm going to speak to you one time mm. and then if you don't get it right sorry you lost right. the game show right like yeah. it's it just doesn't work that way and yeah, so good. he's going to continue to to move us and and direct us and he's certainly been doing that for me wow I've just really enjoyed this conversation. Yeah. Michelle, yeah. you have like the best little nuggets. I'm thinking like, yeah. what will we highlight on our I was Instagram? Like, is that I'm like, bites. like 10. <laughs> sound bites galore. Okay. So with that thought, like what would be like the last impression, the thing that you would just be, let me just tell this to the listeners, the viewers, like wherever you are, if you're at the beginning of a thing in the messy middle, you've been at it for a while and you're feeling the nudge to sort of do the, do something else, even though you're comfortable. What's the thing that you would share with the listeners that are, are in this next right step journey? So I guess I would say first, don't be afraid to dream big, mm-hmm. right? I think that anything that we think of as our calling or um, the, whatever God wants us to do, if we could do it without him, it's not big enough. Right. I think that there's there's an element of it needing to cause some, I'm just going to say it, fear, right? Yeah. There's got to be a moment where you're like, I cannot do this. Yeah. And that's how you know you're on the right track, right? God doesn't call us to do things that we can do, mm-hmm. right? We're, we're not, whenever we think, it, like, motherhood is a great example, right? I can't do that on my own. My kids are grown and I'm still not doing it on my own, right? It's hard. And so I would say absolutely dream big and don't be afraid to go to God with audacious prayers, right? Just completely audacious that I believe I should be doing this huge thing because we believe in a show off God, right? He loves to show off and he loves to show off with unqualified people who can go in and say, that's what the glory of God looks like. Right. And so he just, he loves big dreams. And I would also say, don't be afraid to take the wrong next step. Right. All of it can be corrected. And so just, just be willing to take a step and then take that next step. And it's all about small movements, right? Obedience is done one step at a time. It's not done in, I'm going to get from A to B immediately. Right. We may never get there. Mm -hmm. but the obedience and taking the steps is what God asks of us. Yes. So good. Good. Good stuff. Good stuff. Carrie, any last thoughts? Uh, No, just thank you so much for sharing with us about your path and your journey that you're on and what God has been teaching you. I think listeners are going to just get so much out of this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, I feel like everything that you've shared, even though it's very personal to you, it can it's a it's a broad brush stroke that can be applied to a lot of lives. So I appreciate your insight, your wisdom, and got the fact that yeah, 48 girl, don't 
we're on, well, we're on our we're in our forties here, so we ain't that old, right? We no, still have a we lot just of have children a little later than you. <laughs> you know what? That's all right. That's all right. You're probably doing it better. <laughs> well, thank you, Michelle, for being with us today. We thoroughly enjoyed the conversation, and I'm excited to see the fruit that will come from this this insight that you have provided with our listeners and our viewers. So, thank you. Oh, thank you. And to all of our fellow warrior raisers, aim your arrows well. Thanks for listening to the Warrior Razor Podcast. If you liked today's episode, please like, subscribe, and share it. Or for more information, feel free to follow us on www.warriorrazor.com. <laughs>